activate disintegrators. The boys are here. WMCH coming at you live. Working man's coffee hour. Episode one. Guys, I'm excited to be here. I really am. I'm I'm so excited. So let me do driving around in the truck. (laughs) Let me do a little introduction. We got B. My name is Darren. You can refer to me as Duggers if you'd like. I got my man Big Patty, Big Poppy J in the top right. I got Squilliam William motherfucking D up in the top left. We are feeling good. We are feeling great. So before we get into things and we get real spicy and we have a good time and we do what we do best, let me put this little disclaimer out here. We're three guys and we're not here to to be fucking politically correct and, and, and worry about all that. We're very satirical in the way that we go about these podcasts. So if you hear something you might be offended by, this podcast probably isn't for you. And if you take it serious, you're in the wrong spot because we're just guys that like to joke around. So with that being said, gentlemen, you were just at my place watching Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou in a boxing match. First takes, everybody. Let's talk about it. Francis Ngannou, obviously the former UFC heavyweight champion. Tyson Fury, the current boxing heavyweight champion of the WBC. Tyson Fury did, in fact, uh, win by uh, split decision. I'm going to keep it a buck. I was rooting for Nagano. Uh, he didn't, you know, he, 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 great fight, both hands. Uh, I was very I was very happy about the camaraderie. They were touching each other a lot. I <laughs> yeah, love when man. dudes touch each other. It's my favorite part of the whole fight. Um, Respect is and, very uh, important they, in combat dude, sports. When Fury was kissing Nagano's cheek, dude, <laughs> I felt a little something. He's getting, a little, he's getting a little fruity. You know, he's getting a little fruity. Yeah. Are we in a boxing he match anymore? I was feeling some fucking crazy shit down south when he was kissing him on the cheek. <laughs> but like, I, I was rooting for Nagano, but like, I'm ha- I, I was happy for both of them. Oh, he's the underdog, um, you know. You have to, you have yeah. to root for the underdog. Oh, I mean, like people always say bet the over, but I always bet the under. This is uh, true. I'm just that guy. This I'm just true. that guy. You ain't gonna win big with the, the over. Ain't gonna win. No, so, I, will. I, what do you think, man? Because, you know, Francis Ngannou scores a knockdown in round three or four. And, and honestly, he came in there looking like he had a great game plan. Like, Ngannou didn't come in there like the wild man that everyone expected him to be. He, he was very poised, and he was even switching stances. So, you know, what, what do you take away from that? Like, what do you think? So, I mean, I, w- I was really surprised, honestly, by that knockdown in round three, just with, uh, with you know, Tyson Fury's, you know, pretty much pristine uh you know career behind him but you know you know someone francis Ngannou, heavyweight champion comes from you know you the ufc the M, you know mma and knocks down the heavyweight champion in in his boxing division that's i mean that's pretty wild i mean it was it was very unexpected to see but uh, at least for for myself. But um, I mean, it was truly incredible. It had all oh of us gosh, stunned, man. It, all of us absolutely. stunned. I almost thought zen. that you know, if uh, if if France and Ghana really wanted to, he probably could have you know knocked Tyson Fury out in that. I'm third sure. Or fourth round, you know, I'm you sure. Know, directly afterwards, but um, overall, I'd say it was a very good fight. Um, I I kind of I kind of knew that it would in fact play out in Tyson Fury's favor. Um, the longer it went on, you know, you kind of yeah, just had to you had yeah. to make that that take there. So yeah, but I mean, Francis Ngannou, I would say, was very very well prepared. I mean, even into the fourth and fifth round, he was still looking very very loose, very you know, up and at him and ready to go as soon you know as soon as possible. But but Tyson, I mean, he even after like the second round, he looked sluggish, he looked slow, but like. It was it was a pretty slow pace uh, in my eyes from Tyson Fury, in you know. But uh, it was I, a very I, poised I, I, fight. Like it wasn't really it, as intense as I expected yeah, it to be. But my, my, I guess my point being is that Tyson Fury, you know, kept up that pretty his slowed pace. It wasn't like a drop off, like dramatically from that you know 
that slowdown in round two and three with the knockdown, he still kept up a very consistent pace, and that's what I like to see. Um, but uh, I gotta say, I mean, it was a it was a really really interesting fight. It, For I, sure. I mean, to me, it just For flew sure. by. But um, I would say Francis Ngannou, you know. I was really, really stunned by how he performed. It like, was a it was, great crossover. Really I mean, was. it was a great it really crossover. Was. Yes. So that was awesome. But now that we got that that current event out of our system, let's uh, let's break down some simple details here. What's everybody drinking tonight? It's Hollow Weekend, so I didn't I'm, preface I'm finna, that I'm before. Keep it a bug. I'm being a white girl tonight. I'm being a fashion. I'm oh, being a fashion. <laughs> bitch, what you got? Cut. What you got? I'm being a fashion bitch. Cut. I got that mic. I got that mic. It's hard. <laughs> I'm yeah, drinking honestly. on a Twisted Tea myself. Will, what you got over there? What you I've got? got myself a uh, Hazy Little Thing IPA. I feel like I've heard um, of that. I feel like right, it's, it's quite nice. I, it's quite nice. I like the teal can. It's got a good taste, good flavor to it. So Love here's a sister, good point. White girl. She's a big IPA girl. She's into witchcraft and <laughs> pendulums and shit like that. So, so here's a good point, Pat. I feel like you'll appreciate this because I, I feel like I'm you, appreciate it. You, have, you have kind of like gotten to this point with me. I don't Maybe. think that beer is the like the best drink for men anymore. Why are we like collectively agreeing I, that this drink that sucks so much ass is better than like a twee or like any sort of seltzer or anything that just tastes no, better? No, can, no, I, I'm gonna, can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna let Pat. I'm gonna let Pat go. Okay. 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 You're gonna let me go first? Yes. 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 Let Please me go first. Me. All right. This is my opinion, though. Personally, so you personally. can disagree with me. I'm fine with that. All right, you throw your opinion first. Are right, you done? I want to hear what I'm you going. guys think, because that's what I think. I think twisted so, teas and shit like that are better. So let me let me let me fucking throw this out there for you, pal. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. Um, I've uh, you know I'm a bitch, and uh, bitches are allergic to gluten. You feel me? But uh, I refuse to accept that title, and uh, I drink <laughs> beer all the fucking time because it's <laughs> fucking awesome. And it's fucking manly. Um, I'm going to be honest. I have removed a lot of gluten out of my diet strictly so I can drink beer. <laughs> um, and realistically, beer has made my body react violently. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. But I just <laughs> love God. I just love beer. And beer loves me. Now, um, I'm gonna, beer's I'm great. Gonna... I'm gonna throw That's a little curveball at you boys. I am ready. Uh, a little, I'm, I a little want fun all the smoke, all. all the curveball. So, any, any uh, liquor can, any hard seltzer, anything that claims it's gluten free, is uh, is just using that as a marketing ploy. I'm sure. No, it's, I believe it's, it. it's completely false because yeah. during the distillation process of alcohol, all of the wheat, all of the all of the uh, the gluten from that that wheat is just I mean, it's literally just evaporated. It's literally well, just being pulled out. What do you think, so, though? What What would you prefer? If someone's like, I now, have your I favorite beer or like your personally. favorite seltzer slash tea or hard drink I, of choice. So I miss Tivana. Now, my this is going to be a curveball for you for you boys, but a yeah. uh, a mixed drink. So like an old fashioned or even just some yeah. some straight Irish whiskey. But a, a mixed drink I find is uh I, I can appeal to that a little bit more than I can to like, you know, your run of the mill beer. That's true. Now so, I, I I'll drink anything. I really will. It doesn't matter to me. I, I mean, don't care. You know, I don't. Beggars care. can't be choosers, you know. Exactly. So. That's my point. That's my <laughs> no. point. So like, you know, if I have a choice between like, you know, you know, this Bud Light can or like, you know, uh, White Claw or anything like 100%. that, any, but. I you know I I'd, I'd have to make my choice but if I could really like okay this is what I want to drink I, it's I'd say it's a, it it has to be a tough tie between a uh a draft pour Guinness and a mixed cocktail Just to preface I, Will is very Irish in his heritage very, so he's kind of very, inclined to very. say Guinness I feel I, like I, your hands I, are kind of tied there What do you got my, Pat what do you got My mountains are always fucking blue I gotta represent Coors. Mm -hmm. uh, I love me some Coors. I love my mountains blue. But uh, realistically, if I'm not drinking beer, I'm drinking tequila. Mm -hmm. um, tonight, I'm being a little bit of a bitch. I'm drinking Mike's. Okay, no, but like, up. let's say someone... I'm enjoying my night. There's I a beer in front of you let's, and let's, a mixed tequila say, drink. What are you picking? 
Say it one more time. Mixed drink or a beer? Which one are you picking? Tequila mixed drink or a beer? Oh, tequila Any- all day. That's tequila. what I'm saying. That's okay, what I'm dude, saying. If you tell me, dude. Exactly. If you tell me you're throwing Don Julio in like fucking the grossest drink. I'm drinking that Don Julio drink. I I'm just not Julio excited show. to drink beer anymore. I'm not. Hey, I would agree. I would agree. Now, what's really popular in like the UK and Ireland, specific this. specifically with Guinness, is they will put black currant syrup in the pint after they've poured it. So and what it is gives that? It a little bit, yes. So it's it's almost like a blackberry syrup that they'll pour on the pl- on the pint after they pull it. And it's it's a little bit sweeter. It's less tart. It's less bitter. It's it's more palatable. It was really popular, I believe. It was really popularized just after World War II, I believe. Mm-hmm. With um, sp- I mean, specifically women because they didn't like the taste of beer. But even just going over there, um, so and- now it's becoming like just the regular thing. Yeah, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It's, it's That's very funny. With with you know people my age and even slightly older. Um, but I will I will agree with you. If I do have to pick between you know a Guinness and a mixed drink, I'm probably picking that mixed drink. It's probably going to taste better. I'm probably going to have you know enjoy it more. It's, That's my you point. Know, less, you know? less volume, a... sure, but you know, you know, I like you're I said, getting going, drunker. It tastes better. Yeah, you know, it's a like win-win. it's, it's a less win-win. calories for the most part. But I'm gonna be honest. Like I'm gonna enjoy my time if I'm drinking a Coors. I love me some cores, but okay. I'm gonna be a high school girl slut in college in a college fraternity. If you give me a bottle of Don Julio, dude, I'm slutting myself out for some tequila. <laughs> you know, I'm talking like I'm fucking some. Uh, That's what I'm saying. So it's Don not. Julio. I'm not trying to shit on beer, but I'm Don saying Julio. if you're Damn. if you no, have the not. choice. You're going to pick a mixed drink or a seltzer or a hard tea yeah. or something like that. Uh, no, nah, I'm gonna I'm choose. I'm gonna choose cores over. I it goes for me. Um, I'm putting mixed, mixed drinks drink and hard shit cores. in the same category. Mixed drink cores. But that's my point. Your mixed drink is higher than I'd your cores. Rather, yeah. I'd rather take. Uh, I'd rather take mixed drink, a beer, and then anything else that's like a hard seltzer, or twisted tea, anything else. That's like, what I'm getting my, at. Like, Beer Not for it. the longest time for men has been like the premier fucking drink, mm-hmm. and I, I I'm sick of that narrative because like mm-hmm. I just don't love beer that much. I don't sit there and drink I, it and think like, man, I really enjoy the taste of what I'm drinking. It's like I can tolerate the taste of what I'm drinking, but I'd rather have like some kind of mojito mixed drink or some shit or I oh, like dude, call dude, me a no, bitch. Gotta, I love twisted teas. I've got a story for you about mojitos specifically. Oh Jesus I'm Christ! Super tough and wicked confident, wicked tough. I'm fucking wicked tough, wicked confident when I'm drinking BS, kid. So right? the beer has more to do with I'm the look than it story. does with your enjoyment, right? Is that fair yeah. to say? Pat? I would say that's fair. I would say that's fair. That is so fair. what what story you have about mojitos? That's funny. I think so, that's why you guys. <laughs> so, what, so back in March, I had the privilege of going over to the UK. And visiting a few of my friends that I met online. And they have a big Twitch community, a big online streaming community. Massive. And I spent a week there. And we were meeting, all of us, just about all of us were meeting up on a, on Friday. Which happened so to be I want to throw a day. side note in here. I'd hate to interrupt you, but just for everybody out there, when Will went on this trip, he kept sending me snaps, <laughs> and it was just pictures of hard liquor that would disappear in like an hour or like under oh, an yeah. hour. So anyway, yeah. please continue. But I just want them to know that you were so, a fucking animal during this trip. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like it was, it was, it was constant. It was, it was, it was belligerent and it was brutal. But. On that Friday, that like the second to last day that I was there, just so happened to be St. Patrick's Day. Mm. <laughs> Twelve of us got to a bar at like four p.m. That happened to be one of my friend's favorites. We get there, and we leave by seven p.m. Now, probably around you know anywhere between four and seven, there was at least four pitchers of either mojitos or long island iced teas sitting on the table we're talking pitchers 
and I'm just slinging down drinks, just like, oh, this is a great time. I'm, you know, this is phenomenal. And then at seven, we walk to the next bar, maybe 20 minutes away, max, max. We show up, everyone else shows up. There's 40 people packed into this bar. And I don't think I stopped drinking until midnight when the bar closed. Oh, Jesus. Jesus it was eight Christ, hours, dude. eight consecutive hours of straight drinking. That is so fine. I don't think my liver has sustained such damage since. So it was brutal. It was constant, and I loved every fucking second of it. Because I'm I would sure. just bounce around between the little groups. You just have no form. idea what's going on. You're just like, I gotta, I gotta be in this direction. Clue. Yeah, exactly. You know? no, not a single clue what's going on. My head's empty, and I'm just like, go, 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 go. It was actually pretty nice because I like for the majority of the of the night, like I was I was with this this beautiful this very nice girl, mm. and you know, I would go from like a love interest, mm. <laughs> potentially, potentially maybe the next time I go over okay, there, I ain't gonna, okay. I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say anything, but uh, I ain't gonna you hold know, you from. You know, I would, I would be sitting with her and, you know, a few of of, of, of of our other friends sitting outside, you know, chatting. I finish my drink, slug one down, go out to get a new one back at the bar. And then on my way there, I'm, like, talking with six different groups of people. It's, like, you know, maybe been, you know, 15 minutes since I said I was going to go get a drink. But I get it, come back. And then eventually as the night progressed, me and her kind of moved along and mingled with just about every single person other group there which was which was really nice to have someone to just like you know force you to uh to to socialize no i i, I feel that i feel that so your story is funny because it, it leads me into a nice segue pat you and i have a very nice drinking story together and i have a lot you do but you only have one with me that is truly special and that is the first time you and I have ever college party together at a campus oh, called Stonehill College oh, in, in Western Mass. Midges well, it's more Latinas, like Southwestern. Right? Midgets and Latinas. So I want oh, I you to describe how much you remember from that day leading up to the night and then to the point where eventually everything kind of fades out and then I will come so, in. So let me describe... <laughs> So the previous night, Mr. Doherty, that is great. Mr. Doherty, yeah. Mr. Doherty, <laughs> making a guest appearance. This is awesome. Oh, scripting, huh? <laughs> 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 yeah, I was arrested, Mr. Doherty. <laughs> Pat, please, please get to I the story, dude. Was arrested. All right. So uh, before uh, before we went to Stonehill the night before, I was very fucked up. Um, I. Went to the bathroom and had projectile vomit so strong to the point where the moment I was closing the door, I just tilted my <laughs> neck slightly, oh, slightly, goodness. like 15 degrees up. Not even enough. Not even I remember this angle. story, dude. This not is even a good. 90 degree angle enough to hit the roof. <laughs> but somehow I went like this and my vomit came out so strong it hit the roof it what were you drinking that screws. day dude uh, um, night, that, technically well it's the night started and with Buck says it was tequila the, no it, was tequila. it actually it wasn't tequila this was pre-tequila pat what, what, what uh, were you drinking uh, on i was it started off with some cores okay love them cores and then some fireball and gatorade which is the worst oh, combination gross. you can that's possibly gross. imagine liquor before yeah, beer will, fella liquor you, before let beer me, let, let, let me tell you i know i know i know um i was just an i'm just an alcoholic so i like alcohol um, <laughs> I'm, listen i'm but, uh, same, but, but same. fireball in red or blue gatorade tastes like bad christmas like think <laughs> of your christmas going horribly wrong that's what fireball and gatorade tastes like I'm, um, listen, I'm it, not going to hold you there. I'm sure you're right. Like, it sounds like Christmas with a divorced family that all have yeah. forced to meet up. And like yeah. once a year, like we have to tolerate each other. Fuck. That's God, about I what I would here. guess it, it would be. Yeah. But please continue, um, Pat. The story only gets better. Fucking. And then I decided to have Tito's in Mio. Ooh, <laughs> that's never a good In the idea. same that's night? A, 
That's yeah. bad. That's oh my bad. god. I mean, great decision making on your part. I gotta say, I really do. So I you just deserve to vomit. <laughs> that that's kind of what you're getting at here. So then I proceed to go, guys. I'm going to hook up with a female tonight, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> I walk out to the bathroom, which is the handicap bathroom, by the way. <laughs> that we just you read. probably were at that point, to be fair. Um, I'm I just, listen, he, a bit of a so daywalker. Violently goes back in my room and go. I'm in no condition. To do what I want to do, and then fall asleep. <laughs> that is yeah. that was and probably I, your best. I go to Stonehill the next day. So I, I didn't know you were coming. Shoulders. I didn't know that you were coming to you that didn't? whole thing. No, that was a plan for a long time. Yeah, I had no idea. I hadn't seen Pat in like months, and I remember our buddy Nickus at Murbeck picked me up. I didn't even know Murbeck was was going to be with us too. I knew we were going to Stonehill. I didn't know he was going to be with Nickus. So. They show up in my driveway, and I'm already fired up. And they're like, we're taking you to a special location. And then I, I, I enter Pat's campus, and I'm like, oh, my God. We're picking up, <laughs> we're picking up fucking Patty Cakes J, dude. Like, I'm fucking uh, I'm fired way, I'm up. Legend. I'm, when I walk out himself. of the campus, when, I, when I'm leaving my dorm room, I go, there's a group of girls walking in. I go, oh, no, I hooked up with one of them last night. That I would do. It was the most awkward. That? It was the most awkward pass by ever. I had to, like, try not to laugh. You guys, I remember, I go, I go, guys, don't say anything. I hooked up with one of them last night, and we walked right past them. And they're like, why didn't you say anything? I go, it was a regretful hookup. <laughs> Some shit like shit, that. I, oh, shit my happens. God. So I remember our pregame yeah. meal was McDonald's. Now, it couldn't have been later yeah, than, right. like, 4. This party wasn't till like, 10. So this was this Jesus. was Pat with Ab, by the way. This was Pat with Ab, ab. so a I single, ate A single Ab. <laughs> Yeah, ab, single ab. Th- th- that's why I'm throwing that out there. Pat with ab, ab. I eat pretty healthy at McDonald's. I think that's what your username has to be changed to, Pat with ab. Pat with <laughs> ab. But we, we show up to this McDonald's and we're eating, and then we get back to Stonehill, and it's like 6 o'clock. I, actually, I don't even know. So we, no, like, we, 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 we fucked went to around. A liquor store. You guys, no, 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 we went to a liquor store, and you guys tried to have Oh, my stuff. God, that's right. So, Will, farted. we tried to force Pat mm-hmm. to, like, use his fake ID at a liquor store. And I we didn't said, Oh, so we just sent him in. Yeah, you just sent me in. <laughs> you were like, you look old enough. He goes I in. I just shaved. I just shaved. I didn't look old enough. I don't know where this came from, but it happened. So he goes in, and we're sitting in the car, and I think it's. It's got to be like 7.30 at this point. Yeah. We like fucked around yeah. till like 7.30. And we drive Pat down to this liquor store. And we're like, Pat, dude, you're old enough, dude. It'll be fine. And I guess the one guy at this liquor store, like the one fucking dude that always cards youngin. people. It was a new guy. He, he always cards people. So Pat I apparently walks up to the counter with the beers and he just stares Pat up and down. And, no, I, and just, Pat, I didn't have beers. I didn't have beers. Pat was I just had, defeated. I had... I had Malibu, Fireball, um, fucking, what's that, uh, uh, Jack Daniels. Was it the honey? And a six-pack of high noons. So, Pat had everything, and he walks up, and, like, Pat doesn't even try and fight it. He's just like, yeah, I know, and, like, puts his <laughs> shit back. And he has, like, no, 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 no. He goes, can I see your ID? I go, Damn. I left my wallet in my car. He goes, can you go get it? I go, uh, uh no. Can you just sell it to me? And That's what like, you said? Oh. That was yeah, super I funny. What to say. <laughs> and I was like, um, no. Um, can you just sell it to me? And he was like, um, can I have your ID, please? And I was like, you can have, my, um, I have, I have my citizen's <laughs> bank card. <laughs> uh, was, yeah, bro. I need ID. You're in, and I you're was, in and I the just, fucking clear. Away. You're in the fucking clear with the Citizens Bank ID. That's, that's I, thought, over. I thought so. I thought so. Listen, I would so. I would have sold you the liquor. Yeah, I'd have been like, this kid's bold. I'll just you. let him fucking buy it. Just might as well. Just yeah. might as well. But anyway, we, to be bold in this book. it's not worth fighting. We get back to Stonehill and we're like pre gaming at like eight thirty. We don't even leave the dorm there till like booze. ten. There's booze for everybody, by the way. I had no need. To go to the liquor store. There was no reason for me to do that except embarrass myself. Yeah, Murbeck like, just didn't just want us to use his booze. Yeah, that really, was, was simply really the whole thing. Murbeck just, just wanted really to embarrass me. That's we had all, plenty. No, we had plenty of liquor. It so much. It was I, I was, was definitely good. like pretty drunk by the time we left the dorms. 
uh, and we show up, and I haven't hadn't really experienced like a college party, like a bunch of people cramming into a house and just like fucking, like just everyone was just sweating, like everybody was just fucking, just fucking sweaty as shit, jumping fucking, around. Like great playlist selection, but other than that, I was not very impressed. They're just and fucking. That's it. Here's a funny part of the night that I remember. So we had met this girl beforehand. Uh, I'm one? not going to name her, but it wasn't Which the one? one that you know. It wasn't okay. the one that you had an experience with. But we right. met this girl, and we for sure knew that she had a boyfriend at that point. So <laughs> Nickus, so Nickus, who is with us, I like lose him once we enter this house. There's like at least 100 people crammed into this like tiny-ass house. And so I turn around, and there's like this kind of like balcony, like not balcony, but like you know how there's like window sills and they're like kind of extended like it's a long window sill like you can sit on it so they're standing up on that and i turn around and the girl and nickus are just like sucking face in front of this window and i'm like dude this girl confirmed has a boyfriend like i'm so confused at this yeah. point nickus nickus is nickus though you know I'm he's a dog I'm no he, yeah. he's a dog for yeah, sure yeah but um, later on, we figure out that she's in an open relationship, so it was fine. But at the time, you think, like, turning around and seeing this, you're like, this guy's wild. What the fuck is going on? Uh, this girl's for the streets. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what to think. This man is bold. But uh, I, I remember Pat was, like, dancing with this chick, and, like, the, the oh, whole... No. <laughs> the whole vibe of the night was like we're all having a great time, like, we're all trying to yeah. get lucky, it's, it's whatever. Right. And nothing ends up successful I, I, in any way let me let me let me let me let me say this real quick please take over all i wanted to do was watch full metal jacket okay there's a build-up to this don't jump here there's a build-up slow down let me get there let me get there so we're partying at this house and we actually dealt like five times by the way this house so i lost everybody i want to preface this pat me, Nickus and I was Burbank. with you the whole time. Darren, Lefty. I was with you every time. No, Darren, I was no, with you every time. No, you were not. I, yes. linked up, I linked back up with everybody no. after you guys all left the house. Because No, because I was lost because I was with Latina girl. and then Did you come with me out, upstairs with at that fucking frat house? No, I was with Nickus. Never mind. See, I told day. you. I, I am. I gotta say though, Pat. Shit. I gotta say. I really do have to say. I have a newfound respect for you about that. About just wanting to go watch Full Metal Jacket. No. Like, so let me you. let me get there. Hey, let me we'll explain to you how this makes so much sense. So I, I lose everybody, and I'm trying to find them. And eventually, I get outside and I find them. I'm like, all right, let's go back to the dorms. Like the night is winding down. It's like fucking one in the morning. You know, the parties shut off. It was somebody's birthday, so we got we got lucky that we even had a party to go to. Yeah. But um we go back to the dorms and me and Pat are just kinda like roaming around. We're like we're like, we gotta find some I, girls, man. We I, gotta have a good time. Can so, I continue the story at this point? Because this is my view at this point. Yes, yeah, so we get back into the dorms right. and what do you remember after so, that? All right, so we get back into the dorms. And then what I think right, when I get drunk, I miss I, I, I get the floors very wrong. Um, when I was at my college before things happened, um, I missed my floor a lot. So we're on the right floor and I look to my right and this one room has a lovely air mattress that is designed purely for Pat Jones. <laughs> and the movie that is playing is designed purely for Pat Jones, which he's been asking for for a long time, which is called Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. And I walk in and I'm like, hey guys, can I watch this with you? And they're like, yes. I watch about 20 minutes and I fall asleep. <laughs> Darren, so you can continue this the story. Is, this time. is where I pick up. So I left Pat before he fell asleep. Hmm. I kept Dude, running. I, I went in there alone. They didn't know who I was. No, you didn't. We went in there together, but I left you oh, like you, very no, we quickly. Did, we did, but they didn't know who I was. They didn't know who Colby was. Uh, I think they were the girl's was, friends that they didn't knew. know who Colby was. They were talking to Colby, and they said they didn't know who Colby was. So college is just great like that because you can just bust into people's it. rooms. But um, so I I get in there and like I'm like, damn, I really gotta use the bathroom. So I go out, and there was this like blonde girl in the hallway that I kept running into, and I kept introducing myself, and I kept forgetting her name. So this is our third <laughs> time interacting. So I was like, hey, 
how you doing? I'm like, whatever. I've seen you four times now. Um, and I, I don't know what I got distracted by, but I must have left Pat for like at least half an hour. So you I know, come you back more than half an hour. No. I was MIA for a long time. They didn't know. You have I was. no idea how long you were asleep for. I don't, but people have told me. So I'm gone for at least half an hour. I come back. Pat is passed out like this with a ping pong ball in his left hand. <laughs> and he's just like just tucked up in the corner. And I'm like, dude, Jesus. what happened to you? So we drag Pat back to Colby's room. <laughs> and from here, Pat is like done. So when I showed up to Stonehill, I brought a blanket and a pillow to like sleep on the floor, like no air mattress, no nothing. And I was like, okay, cool. I got my stuff. Pat immediately steals my blanket and my pillow. And I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, so I'm just chilling there with Murbeck. By the way, at this point, I have missed all opportunities with Latina. Women are gone. Asleep. Women are gone. It's like three in the morning. Yeah. Women are and out then of the I question. Try, when, I, when they woke me up, I was like, oh, she, she, oh, she, she likes me. And then <laughs> you guys were like, um, you Pat, aren't making any sort of six sense. hours. It has been six hours. Pat, go to sleep. I was like, no oh, okay, sort right, of sense. But um, so we get Pat back to Colby's dorm, and we're like trying to wind down. And uh, Nickus decides to fall asleep on Colby's roommate's fucking bed, and I'm like, all right, whatever. So I'm just sitting in a chair, and I'm like, fuck, this sucks. So two hours go by, and it's like five in the morning, and, and Murbeck looks at me, and he's like, dude, you want to go like watch the sunrise? So I have a time lapse on my phone of us watching the sunrise, and I have been up for at least twenty four hours as soon as that Jesus sun touched Christ. the top. I have never been so fucking tired the day after a fucking event. Now this is where the second half of the story plays in. Everybody goes back to their colleges, and they're fine. They're used to this kind of shit. Me, I go back to my college, and I get. Three different fucking illnesses. I get Jesus. mono, which the second time, so I didn't even know that was possible to get it twice. I get a chest infection and a sinus infection. <laughs> I had three right, different right, fucking right. illnesses after debaucherous weekend at Stonehill. You're going to have to cut this out? No. Darren, right after Stonehill, Stop! I got pneumonia. Shut the fuck up. I got pneumonia and then I got arrested. I mean, okay? you can say that. Yeah. I got pneumonia and then I got arrested right well, after. We don't have to day. specify why you got arrested. We'll just we'll uh, say that. Man, maybe. But uh, yeah, Stonehill. Stonehill was a time. Stonehill was a time, and it's funny because Stonehill knocked me out of like having any sort of hollow weekend. Um, so this is where the next segment kind of comes into place. So I was on Instagram the other day, and um, there's this girl that I know who like is in a very committed relationship and this is her first year at college so i saw her post yesterday on instagram and she's in a like like the slutty bunny costume like the generic slutty bunny costume so in my mind i'm like dude if i'm the guy my relationship's over my shit's Mm -hmm. done like it's gone crashed it's cut off like Bro, I ain't the only Hugh Hefner in that girl's life. Like, mm-hmm. let's be let's be a hundred percent honest. Like, a, a, am I am I bullshitting, Pat? Like, <laughs> right? What happened? Say, can you repeat what happened? I can't. I can't. So, there's this girl that I know. Um, that she's in a committed relationship, and this is her first year of college. So it's Hollow Weekend, okay. right? We're talking about like a, like literally yesterday. I was checking Instagram feeds, and I see her post in this like. The bunny costume, like the generic bunny costume, Playboy bunny costume, and I'm like, bro, this dude's relationship is over. It, over. It, it's got to be the Done end. <laughs> There's another Hugh Hefner Netflix. out there. You ain't that guy. Sorry, pal. There's a new I'm roster a, in town. I'm keep it a buck, buck with him. Keep it a buck. There's this, there, there's this girl. This this situation happened to me just now. Okay. Okay. Not just now, but like like just like recently. This girl I was talking to, mm-hmm. very intimate with. Um, all of a sudden, she sent me a Snapchat, and she was like, "Oh, I'm a bunny. I'm a playboy bunny. Oh, I'm gonna go to UMass." And I'm like, I, <laughs> "The UMass makes it that, that much worse. Yeah, it's that much oh, worse." Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, they just won't talk in. Like, 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 like you what are you supposed know. to do? You're going to the premier party school where terrible decisions happen. I, I'm out. See ya. I really like this. Would be so funny to me if, like, sorry, I got a burp. If like a Yale or a Harvard did a study as to how many relationships end shortly after a hollow weekend. I wonder what that statistic looks like. The the statistic would be absolutely insane. I'm sure. It would be diabolical. (laughs) It would be diabolical. So, speaking of hollow weekend, I uh, texted a friend of mine uh, not that long ago, literally Friday, and I asked her a question. I knew it was good. (laughs) And my question was, um, why do girls dress so scandalous on Hollow Weekend? Oh, yeah. Now, this question got posted on her story, and her friends Ooh. gave a lot of responses. So mm-hmm. we're going to go through those responses. Oh, boy. Let's and do this. We're going to have a fun time just talking about them. So I'm let's excited. let me pull them up. Here we go, fellas. So this one, admittedly, thankfully... My ego has been in check these days, but this one would hurt me if I if I had a big head. In I quotes, so guys like him know what they're missing out on. Fair. 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 I'm not a party guy, so fair enough. <laughs> Wait, say that um, one more time. So guys like him know what they're missing out on. All right, that's hot. <laughs> uh, here's the next one. Because bikini season is over and our likes are down. That one I find legitimately respectable. You know, the girl's oh, yeah. honest. She's you like, gotta, you, you yeah, she's my, you know, my fucking likes hustle. are down. I got to right? I gotta do something. We're you taking, know, the cameras are out. New viewers coming in. Let like, me be gotta, honest. Your old viewers, like, you got to, you know. Look, the I'm cameras gonna, are out. Her ass is out. The likes are up. Okay? That let equation me, let me, let me makes sense to me. This next one I respect very greatly. Less fabric equals cheaper. That girl hey, is exactly. she's about her money, dude. She's exactly. a fucking boss. She knows. I love it. Right? She's she a girl boss things, right there. Like, it's, she it's, is a fucking girl like, boss. Like, listen, if the roles were reversed and I'm thinking the same way, I'm wearing like a Tarzan, like fabric cloth over yeah. my dick kind of thing. Like, yeah, you're just making this at home with like correct. That you have. Exactly. Like, yeah. Cutting that shit out, getting a good pump on. You're like, this cost me like. A, you know, twelve dollars for a brand new towel, or even you know, just one that you have used, and then whatever your gym membership is, like fuck. Yeah, hell for yeah. sure. Let me tell you, I'm a feminazi. I'm all for them women, and hell yeah <laughs> to that them. thing. <laughs> He's for them. <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. So go girls. We got go girls. a couple more responses, Ooh. and then I can, mm-hmm. then I can kind of get women. out of here. Women uh, are the next, are the next wave. Of human race, women. Somebody Go take girl. this guy's liquor away. <laughs> All right. So Let's, Pat is dressed up as a, as as a yeah. white claw, so it makes sense that he's addicted to the booze. Anyway, next response is pretty solid. It's probably fitting that I'm dressed as a hot dog and I'm snacking. Listen, redneck, white claw, my, hot dog. I, need, I have my natural spirits in my car and ciggies. That's perfect. So here's the next response. You don't have to worry about being the sluttiest there because everyone's on the same page. Now, Pat, <laughs> oh, I haven't been a part of a hollow weekend, so I wouldn't know. Uh, what's the other one? How am, I, how else am I supposed to get a guy to do cute holiday stuff with? It's cuffing season. So I think that one's funny. And here's why. That is pretty humorous, I would All right, say. So what's so, the question we're answering? What's the question we're answering? Can so here's what's funny, Pat, is that the woman who has responded here seems to believe that she's going to find a dating material guy at a Halloween party. Now, what I find hilarious is that anybody has any hope of finding a solid relationship in college, especially if they're not in their senior year. Let me tell you how hilarious that is. Because I have no faith in anything that comes out of college. Because there's a lot of people that really suck these days. <laughs> so, degenerates. Oh, yeah, sorry, there's degenerates on both sides. The chances of both of you not being a degenerate are not very high. So They're excru- excruciatingly low. Hey, I mean, divorce rates go up. Fucking, how do you expect her? Like, I, like all, all props to the girl if, if her... 
like purpose. You know, it if your be plan like, works out. No, if she's like, all right, I want to get with this guy simply because I want to do holiday stuff with somebody. Good for you. Or if you want to exploit the man and have him buy you shit, sure, I'm all for that. Yeah. You know, do what you got to do. If he's a shitty yeah. guy, fuck him, dude. Take his money. Fucking mm-hmm. <laughs> rob can I, that. Can I... Cardi B style, drug him, fucking rob him, and then never talk to him again. <laughs> time. So here's something that's confusing the shit out of me these days. Have you guys seen posts recently about girls dressing up as like Magic Mike for Halloween? That's that something... I don't understand. Now, I had it kind of explained to me. Much of it, but Apparently, it's supposed it. to be really funny because anytime a man tries to do something sexy, it's probably cringe. And now I understand that Magic Mike is a very cringy movie in general. Mm-hmm. So, in a way, I respect it. But I just find it mm-hmm. very strange. Okay? Mm-hmm. I think that there are, <laughs> there are definitely better options. I saw a Step Brothers costume uh, this week that was pretty good. But, um... Guys, let's let's keep it kind of simple here. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, we talked about some liquors that we enjoy. We're working men, yeah. so realistically, we're up pretty early. What kind of coffee do you guys like? We'll get Ooh. you going. Are so, you a coffee I, 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 guy? I, 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 know, I know something that can top anything you guys will say. I don't care what you have to say. I mean, well, you can top you me. This is, this, is, this is the coffee. Ooh. We're not sponsored yet. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully will be. But the Black Rifle Coffee Company. Oh, I they didn't have to say that. Pre-canned, um, I think it's eleven or eleven and a half ounce, like small cans, about two hundred milligrams caffeine. They have, uh, I've seen espresso and cream, and I've seen espresso and mocha. I've also seen salted caramel. That's everything I've good. listed is phenomenal. It's made with, uh, mm. with chicory root i believe and so it takes all of the you know acidic garbage aftertaste of coffee and completely cuts it it's a phenomenal game changer dude phenomenal i've heard rogan talk about this company so i've been interested from the get-go but i'm i'm surprised that you've actually tried it i genuinely love that brand now Personally, there's a, there's a big difference between the small 11 and a half ounce cans and the larger, almost like monster style cans. The monster style cans you'll see uh, with a wide variety of flavors. I don't particularly like those because they leave an odd aftertaste. Excuse me. All go. right. So, so obviously, like uh, me and Will kind of agree that Black Rifle is pretty solid coffee company pat what is your go-to coffee in in the morning dude you know as a working man personally all right so with my company right i work in plymouth most days so and my company is stationed in sandwich so we go over the bridge and the bridge has mary lou's and every day we go to mary lou's okay and I get a Red Bull infusion, which is oh. a Red Bull. And then okay. I usually get the blue raspberry flavor. Okay. So I get a okay. Red Bull and blue ras. So okay. you're more of an energy drink guy in the morning. Yes. That is Coffee gives me fair. the shits. Listen, it's fair. It's fair. So. Fair. Yeah, fair enough. In comes Mr. Duggar's opinion. So I start my morning off with... Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it in the in the supermarket, but it's called Stoke or Stock, S T O K or some yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'll have I'll have a cup of that right now. I've been fucking with the pumpkin spice creamer that I have right now. You can call me a basic bitch if you want, but it's pretty solid. Uh, and then other than that, I'm actually a really big fan of like the canned Starbucks cold brew. You know, I think it's pretty solid. And which leads me to a very funny story that happened to me on Friday. So obviously, recording this hollow weekend, it's a Saturday. So on Friday, I had some time in the middle of my day. Sometimes I like a little caffeine to get me going. Mm-hmm. I'm drinking this fucking uh, Starbucks cold brew. And I'm like, dude, I got like, like erect energy. I'm like, dude, my dick is hard drinking this coffee. Mm-hmm. My dick is hard. Like I'm ready to go. Mm. And I'm I'm just simply doing a working man's job. There is nothing mm. <laughs> there, there is nothing to be excited mm. about. But I'm mm. simply so fired up to be in that car, driving back to the job site. Uh, so I just I just love coffee, dude. I don't think there's any other way to put it. 
I just fucking love it's, coffee. It's one of it's one of God's or God's greatest creations. I will have to say the coffee bean. No, nothing beats it in my opinion. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, sure. You can say tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. But go fuck. Yourself. Bro, iced tea makes me piss so much. Oh my god. Now, now, I I'm love iced fan, tea. By the way, I'm I'm a big fan of iced tea. But like, if you're if you're drinking tea over coffee, love iced tea. come on, dude. It's fucking come awesome. On. I mean, no. Like I said, don't get me wrong. Iced tea, phenomenal. One of the best cold drinks out there. Easily, right? It's so versatile. I didn't realize taking, the pissing shit came from taking, the caffeine. Oh. You know? Because, okay, well, like, there's caffeine and tea just in general. Yeah, but it's my, not a my lot, point being is but. you're taking tea over a good, you know, good hearty coffee. I mean, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, really? That I don't understand. Like, if you're trying to wake up, like, yeah. fucking full mast and you're, like, ready to go, you drink yeah, a fucking why coffee. You, why, why, yeah, exactly. Why are you drinking a tea? Like... You're gonna have to drink forty until you, you know, get the same effect of like a coffee. Like seriously, what? The so fuck? great point, Will, because yeah. I grabbed the Stoke espresso blend, so the darkest mm -hmm. you can get. Because I'm a, I'm a fucking get me up. I'm ready to go. I'm gonna mm -hmm. take somebody's head off. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Which is, which yeah. is how I love my caffeine, and I, I am, mm -hmm. I'm for sure. I'm, an I'm addict. right there with you. I'm, I'm right for there sure with you. an addict, dude. I'm the same way. But um, here's something I'm dealing with in my life. My dad. Mm -hmm loves to critique me with with everything that i do so here's here's a here's a my funny dad's dad is funk, so, let's hear this. so obviously he can't critique you but my dad happens to critique me a lot um here's the one thing my dad says i'm too judgmental but the way he describes it like let me paint a picture for you let's say me and my dad hey, are like me mona lisa let's go here's your mona lisa place my dad and i back in like the late 30s, like early 40s. Mm -hmm. And let's just, for the sake of Saken, we're in Germany. And my dad is like, man, you're judging this Australian painter dictator really... Austrian. 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 Australian, dude. We're drinking too much on this podcast. This Austrian <laughs> painter, okay? You don't know where, he's, where, where he came from. You don't know what he's faced in his background. Maybe, just maybe... He's persecuting all these Jewish people and all these minority groups. But you don't know where he's come from. That's what it's like having like having a conversation with my dad. He will try and convince you that you're being too judgmental of literally anybody. So I, if we're going to be fucking black and white here, my dad would have defended Hitler back in the fucking 30s and 40s. Like, there's, there's, there's no fucking, like, you can't convince me otherwise. I'm not convinced. I'm not. The guy is that adamant. I'm like, bro, you just like shouldn't judge people, dude. It's like not right, <laughs> you know. So, I just, you know, that's that's what I get from him. That's, that's wild. Him. That is that is that's wild. But um, you know, other than that, hey, hey I mean, fucking guys, Mister Mister Duggers is a fucking. He's a wild animal. He's a he's a wild fucking animal. Wild man. But uh, so. The next thing I'd like to kind of bring up is like some crazy work stories. But before I get into you guys' work stories, here's something that I have to bring up because I think it's hilarious. Um, I work at an unnamed company and I have been there for about two months now. This other guy has been here a month longer than me and we pretty much know the same level of uh, of skills. And no, oh, I this, think I know who you're bringing up. This man happens to be of African American descent. He is a black guy, and he makes five dollars an hour less than I do. Ooh, Jesus. I can't wait to start problems now that I know this information. <laughs> Let's say Mr. Bossman comes in, and he's like, "Oh my fucking god, Darren, you are the laziest piece of shit I've ever seen. You suck at working." And I'd be like, "At least I'm not racist." If you sign paying the black guy five dollars less an hour, like what do you say to you that? Do it. What do you say Nothing. to that when it's a fact? When you're literally paying somebody five dollars less for no reason, and the only one that I can come up with is the fact that he's a black guy. Like, what are you gonna do? I nothing. What do you do? Yeah. What do you do? You are in a I, fucking it, predicament as exactly. as a boss or an employer. Yeah. You're fucked. You're fucked. What do you do? I don't, I don't see a way out of that. Can do as a boss, like like you said, there's no way out of it. No, no, no. Like 
to any other department, like if if there was an HR department, everybody would be screwed. Easily. We'd be so screwed. Easily. But that's just we're we're too small. We don't have that. But um, Will, I know you have a story that you were you were like trying to tell me earlier today, and yeah, I want to hear more about it. I really okay. do. So, my company will also go unnamed for you know good reason, but. Um, trying to keep people safe here. That's our, that's our point. That's, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Um, but so I work as a, um, fire sprinkler pipe fitter and I'm an apprentice. Mm -hmm. I'm currently Mm -hmm. going through school to get licensed, everything like that. But, uh, my foreman, the guy who's training me, he used to be a army ranger, which like uh, blew my mind the first time I've had several conversations about his service, you know, with him and, you know, he's always been, you know, pretty, you know, I guess eager to share. Like it's, it's, it's a, such a completely different, you know, way of life than, you know, you or I may have, but you know, it's, he's just as hardworking as the rest of us. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he mm-hmm. goes above and beyond when he can, but when, uh, he was, you know, I believe either training or serving whenever he was pulling watch, what he and his, um, his squad would do is put little dots of tobacco sauce or uh, not tobacco, Tabasco, the hot sauce underneath your nostrils and it would wake you right up. But he would also pack a lip of not only dip, but also instant coffee grounds. Oh, oh, oh. And he would sit there with that, you know, from like 2 to 3 in the morning. Sit that and just let it marinate in his chin. Now, I've never got now, got into the Zen wave, so I tried those. Zins are like, awesome. Zins are lovely. I tried those coffee pouches, and I was not a fan, but please continue. I, I know there's now, more here. Now, like... I don't know how how he might have gotten to that conclusion of like, oh yeah, you know, let's just do that. But you know, it worked from like the hour that he had to pull from like two to three in the morning. Like, mm-hmm. it 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 absolutely blew my mind. But, Honestly, uh, I think I'm such an addict to caffeine that if I ever tried cocaine, it would be a fucking game changer. It'd be problem. game over. I'd be the biggest coke fiend, and I know Pat yeah. agrees with that 100. percent I would, I would awesome. have to agree with that. He's never well. had cocaine. How, what, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> what? You know cocaine would be awesome, but we've never... Cocaine would be so sick if I ever tried it in my entire life. If I ever I got think, to try I cocaine, I think be, I'd love uh, it. I think you boys would absolutely devour. Oh, we'd be coked Adderall. out. Eight balls, no, 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 Adderall, no, 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 fucking no, no, everything. Put in your possession. I was going to ask you for some Adderall earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to ask you. No Let me get that fucking time. Addies, Maybe bro. Pat, time. I know you. I know you got some funny work stories. What do you? What do you got? Um, I've got. Dog. I've got a few more, but I'll let Pat go. So fucking. So I go to this one place, right? And it's like four crews. They go there. So you're you're a and landscape foreman now, just to now, some yeah. Background. I'm, a la- I'm a landscape foreman now, and before. I used to go to this one place. It was like me and like four other crews that went there. And this one dude, he's fired now. I was boys with him. But like, Darren, you know, you know, the like when you when you're like parking the trailer, you put like these two triangles up Uh huh. so that the trailer doesn't roll away. Mm hmm. Yeah, like the fucking parking shits, the rubber, yeah, the whatever. Yeah, yeah, the wheel yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And. And like triangles are sp- like like they have a base at the bottom where you put them down, and then you can't put them down any other place. This guy thought that hey, if we put the base of the triangle on the trailer hitch, and then we put the top of the triangle where there's no stability at all, it is a literal point. <laughs> triangles have points. Oh, fuck. let's put the point on the pavement and put Jesus and attach the trailer to the base of the triangle. I'm starting oh, to see the no. picture here. I'm starting to see a pattern. Yeah. Are you guys on a hill when you're when you're parking? We, oh, we're we're on a hill. They, they're <laughs> definitely on a hill. And the greatest oh, feeling no. of all time, 
at the end of the situation is mowing a whole day, blowing off, weed whacking, mowing, whatever. And then when you're trying to leave the job site to go home, you get a call being, hey, so um, I can't get the trailer on the truck because the triangle isn't wasn't holding it up. So then we have to drive to the trailer and lift it up with our hand, like lift it up. Like how many? No. As a former landscaper, it? not an easy task. Not a simple thing to ask of somebody. It, 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 they're extremely fucking heavy. <laughs> like even with like a yeah. standard mower out of it, it doesn't matter, dude. Like you're talking but, like an easy six hundred pounds at least on that fucking God trailer damn. hitch. I, I'm gonna say this real quick though, like. My landscaping company, I feel as if seeing all the companies around me, like, I feel like we're the best company. Like, I'm being a little biased, but, like, mm. I feel like, I don't know, we have the most responsible people, and then they see... You do the best work, yada, yada, yada. Like, we're, like, like we're the most, like, like professional, I feel like, mm. as, like, around Cape. Mm. Cape, eh. God, like, we go... <laughs> eh. <laughs> this shit you told me, dude, like... Yeah, like, I tell you shit, but, like, but, like... I don't know. You haven't seen. I don't know. No, I mean well, the bigger companies. It's hard to stay consistent with. Uh, with that the shit that, that is an do. unfortunate um, uh, reality that a lot of companies, especially bigger companies, have to deal with. Even in my my own trade of like, not every you know, workers from this branch are not consistent with workers from this branch. Yeah. Like, uh, the office that I work out of, our branch, uh, I believe outperforms every single other branch. And we're working with, oh, like, shit. a skeleton crew. Skeleton oh, crew. And That's they, funny. what's really funny to me is that I'm not even licensed, and I've been doing this maybe six months, and I've been learning. But they're, they're getting to the point where they're saying, you know, the guys that I work with, they're saying that I can start to run guy, you know, run circles around the licensed guys up um, closer to Medford. Now, I'm not going to say that that's what I can do, but from what I've been told, I mean, shit, it's it's starting to seem that way. Mm. Yeah. Mm. See, what happens with my company is that we have had two of our most experienced guys leave in the last, like, month. So me as a guy who's been, and now I'm an HVAC apprentice, so I do duct work and like service calls and and shit like that. But um, I'm getting stuck on like new construction or like remodeling job sites and and being asked to do shit that I have simply no idea how to do. <laughs> like I'm sorry, I, I hate to be like completely honest about it, but they're they're simply just throwing me in the fire. It's like it's like they they stack up the wood and they lit the fire and they're like, mm, there's this little kid standing next to this fire. Let's just kick him in just for funsies, like you know, Let's no see what happens. no fire retardant gear, no nothing. It's like it's like taking a firefighter and not giving him any of his gear and throwing him in like a fucking house fire. <laughs> like, yeah. just figure it out, dude. And and like my uh, swim, my baby, father swim. my father has expressed the fact that this is how it was back in like the late 80s, early 90s, and he's horrified to know that it's still like that now with where with where I work. Because he grew up uh, uh, where I work now. So for, for it to still be like that is, is kind of concerning. Because every time that I fuck up, and, and simply, like, if I fuck up, it's because it wasn't explained well enough to me. Like, I know when I, like, truly fuck up, we're like, okay, I, I just didn't do that the right way. Like, I knew how to do it. I yeah. just didn't. But most like of the time, corners or like most of the time, I just don't understand what we're doing in general. But, like, every time someone yeah. has to go back and fix it, you are just charging the person more money. And it's like, this business model is not going to work. Like, we are so fucked. No. I'm so scared that this that this is not going to end well for our company because it's kind of been up in well, the air for a while as to, as to gonna, what's going to happen gonna... with us. So, do I? Do you want me to explain? Do it. Do you want me to tell a story about work? I do. I do. Whatever you got, dude. Right. It's gonna be. I know it's gonna be. So, funny. um, so in this place, who's the guy that always hits houses? Who is that? What was that all about? Okay. Well, literally, so in this place I work at, 
Right. We work in a big neighborhood that is quite expensive. Um, and we're weed whacking around there. Yeah. Right. And I am with, I've been with a crew that has been there all summer, but now we got a new guy. And so when you're weed whacking, you usually only go where the mower goes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you help out. Like, like if he misses something, you hit that. You're covering the edges and, and shit like that. Yeah. Like where the mower can't get. Yeah. Yeah. Not 50 feet into the woods where the <laughs> mower doesn't go fucking near. You know, you, you know what I mean? Like I'm not tr- like, what the fuck am I looking at? Yo, like I'm getting pissed. Pat has like, been holding this in for a long time. <laughs> it was making me so mad. I was so pissed off. I'm in. Okay. So we're like, we're halfway through the day. And first of all, right. Like vertically, right. So you flat whack and you vertical with. The weed whacker vertically edging like the beds yeah. and, and shit like that. And when you fucking vertical, you don't dig into the ground because that's a whole different fucking machine you're using when you dig in the ground. That's called an edger. That's for seasonal crews, not mo crews. Mo crews just get the grass. Seasonal crews get everything, yo. So I'm trying to describe to this guy being like, hey, like stop digging into the ground with the weed whacker. And I think of a great analogy. I'm like, yo, it's like cutting a steak with a butter knife. So I, and, and he name, looks man. he looks at me and he That's goes, solid. I get it now. He's like, I get it now. And then he tells our bosses, being like, yo, Pat was showing me all this crazy shit. Like he was telling me that like I can't do this anymore. So I'm like, word, like he gets it. Like we're gonna fucking do it. Couple hours later, I keep looking and I keep seeing that he does this, and I call him out for it. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm trying. Like, I'm sorry, I hit it." And I'm just assuming that he's missing it. And then, like, like an hour before we're gonna finish, I bring it up again. And he goes, "It just looks better when I do it this way." And I'm I'm mad younger than this dude. I'm like ten years younger than this dude, and he's 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 about that. And he's I'm, about that. Yeah. Oh yeah, my god. And I, and I'm like, yo, like, you're you're fucking wrong, pal. Like, I, let, let me tell you. And he finally gets my side. But it just took so fucking long, and I'm so annoyed. But now I'm glad I'm on. Just a fucking guy just in digging into the ground. ground. Like, you know what that reminds yeah. me of? You guys remember that scene from SpongeBob where he's, like, fucking sweeping the floor with, like, the wrong end of the broom? Oh, my God. That's, that's probably just simply the same. Hey, pal. You just roll in from Stupid Town, yeah. <laughs> like for like, like, wow. honestly, hey. honestly, hey. I I, I hey, just run into so many. Rolling from uh, from Stupid Town. It, it's the mm-hmm. same thing. It's the same fucking same thing. thing. But um, I just don't think that men and women like each other very much these days. No. I really don't. I, I, they really I, fucking I they, to, they don't I, like I, each I, other. I might have to agree with you on that. I might have to agree with you. Yeah. It's I it's a very you. extreme world that we live in. I don't. Oh, we're gonna cut that out. <laughs> it's like I don't, I don't hate women. I'm um, saying just like when you look online and, and you see like both sides, they're just like I am terrified are, of women. Men are cheaters and they fucking and they do this and that and then men are like, Oh my god, but she's like a cheater and she's like a whore and like this, that and the other. And it's like I've never seen two like reasonable people just like try and Nothing come together on something that other. makes sense. Oh yeah, that true. That I true. mean, look at look at look at like like legitimately on on a more serious now. Look at how high divorce rates are these days, and, and just look at how bad like the relationships around us that that we've been able to to witness are. There's not really a, like a healthy level of anything. What I've noticed, what I've noticed, is there are a lot of good women out there that you can meet that are like, you know. There's great morals. Yeah. They're, they're a great yeah, uh, connection exactly. with their family, and and you know they're, it's, they're good. They're genuinely a good person. Not that that's a, you don't need a great connection with your family, but like yeah. uh, there are certain things. It's, that a, it's are just, definitely a bonus. It's definitely uh, I, a bonus. Of course, of course. Mm. But like the the there's almost a shortage of good men out there, like good hardworking men who are willing to just put their nose to the grindstone and just get to work. That's lacking you know? too. 
that's yeah, that is that's so what I mean is that like you know there's that disparaging so if you are part of that like small you know f- five to one percent of men that are like okay you know I know what I want to do I know how to do it I know how to be a good not not just a good person but a good man well, what I think is there's there's a big loss of morals in the world that we're in these days. And, and the one thing that I see is that it's very much an eye for an eye kind of world. There is no more like turn the other cheek attitude, which I, I very much admire and respect myself. And, and it's it's really like kind of depressing to see. Everyone's just out to get each other these yeah. days. And, and it's yeah. awful. It's terrible. Let me let me say what this do you have, Pat? Um. Realistic, like, like everyone just looks at life as a mentality at this point, and it doesn't, it doesn't, no one looks at it as life, if you get what I'm saying. Like, yeah, it's I, like, I've, it's like it's, they just look at how it's a game for everyone, yeah, instead of you know like, I mean? oh, you know, it's not this beautiful thing that God created, of yeah. like, I can go venture off and you know look at these valleys mountains and and streams and rivers and and all this wildlife and yeah. you know i yeah sure i can get my heart broken but that you know and i can feel sad and i can feel happy and i can feel angry but that is what makes me inherently human but but at the same time like nowadays like people aren't even looking at those things that are like oh mm-hmm. this makes me sad this makes me unhappy everyone's looking for an excuse Here's yeah. something an that I read not that long ago. An, an, an excuse, but also acceptance in their own bad decisions and misery. Yeah. Here's here's something that like, I and I, I might be like like uh, reiterating it not not as well, but uh, it was this person and say. yeah, and it was this person. And it was like, what if I could give my 21 year old self advice from as a 31 year old? And it was the and I've seen this everywhere, and I'm sure mm-hmm. me, Will, and Pat, we're all guilty of this. We we set these expectations. It's like if I do X, Y, and Z, then I will be happy. That mentality in itself sets you sets you up for failure. Happiness oh, is purely in the moment. Right. Happiness is purely you don't no, no. you don't do certain things in order to feel happy. You need to feel exactly. happy yeah, as exactly. you're building towards something. It's fine to have exactly. goals and so aspirations, but mm-hmm. in order to truly be happy, you need to appreciate a moment for what it is, not thinking exactly. I'm going to be happy when I get there. If I can build on that, if I can build, we're gonna on go. That we're gonna go. Will then, Pat. So, right. it that that I definitely did, and I can admit that I did at one point have that sort of mentality, like, oh, if I get X, Y, and Z, then I'll be happy. But you know, I've been working on myself for at least the past, you know, six months, closer to a year. Um, but the more and more that I try to change my mentality about everything, it's like, you know, it's not that one thing that will make me happy, that unicorn that's out there. God, no, no. What makes me happy is, you know, I have a goal for myself, whether realistic or unrealistic. Honestly, the more unrealistic, the better um, of, you know, I have that to look forward to, and I'm working towards that every, you know, I'm, I'm putting in every step to work towards that goal. And as I do, I can visually and um, mentally and emotionally see myself progress. And that is what makes me proud of not just myself, but those along the journey with me and those that, you know, I have that camaraderie aspect too brings me joy. Like I understand that not everything is going to be sunshine and rainbows, but it, you know, that, that hard work, seeing that progression, seeing that, you know, I am go, I'm making, you know, I'm, I'm making progress towards that end goal, whatever that may be. It, you know, makes me happy that I, you know, that I can do that, but also proud of the steps before. So there's a quote that I love, and I I think you're going to resonate with this very much. It's, um, you should always climb the mountain 
to see the world, not climb the mountain for the world to see. You should always do something because you want to be there, not exactly. uh, for the the eyes of anybody else. And, exactly. and that's just something that yeah, it comes with time. You don't really understand, uh, you know, how that whole you know, perception works. I mean, mm-hmm. as young people, you're, you're, I don't know where it comes from, but you just have this like this fire and this urge to like prove to people that you are something. And, and I feel like I've you heard this before, you you are. like young people. And, and I still somehow feel this way on certain days. It's like, you just think that you're a loser. You think mm-hmm. that in most situations, you're, you're not very good. You don't stack up to the competition. You know, you, you're just, you're simply not where you wish you could be but you know it you need to self-reflect more and you need to be like look at how far i've come from point a to point b and we don't do that enough there's not enough self-recognition exactly it's always and social media plays a big factor in this we're we're showing the highlights of everything and and it's never truly like a because life is never a constant incline or a constant decline the hundreds of thousands of night of sleepless nights that that person has spent to get that you know Lamborghini, Ferrari, whatever. There are mountains and Ferrari. peaks and and, and drops exactly. and dips. Yeah. Now, I I wanna I wanna give Pat a chance to speak on this because Pat, I've seen you grow as a person over the last couple months, and I I want you to talk to me about how your mentality has changed and what that's done for you. Like, what's different? Uh, about Pat six months ago that it is now. What do you wake up and and how do you kind of how do you will yourself through days that are tough, and what's changed so, in your life? So really, so like Pat, Pat six twelve months ago was a very different Pat than I am today. Mm-hmm. Um, I honestly thought I was probably invincible back then. If you asked me back then when I was gonna die, I was probably gonna realistically as a joke, I would have been like, ah, oh, thirty four liver disease. <laughs> I wasn't gonna think that was gonna happen, yeah. but like, yeah. Now you know, I think I don't know. Um, I've had many things that have happened in my life to make me rethink things, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. almost I'm thankful for the things to happen to me. Um, uh, like, honestly. College is probably one of the worst decisions a person can make. That is another uh, great point. That is I'm another be great honest, point. Yeah. Horrible decision if you're a normal person. If you want to be a scientist, if you want to be a teacher, whatever, smart person, do college. If you want to be a fucking normal person, no reason. Don't go. Don't go. No, and and no. here's something that no, bothers me so much is that as a as a senior in high school, you are not really shown a different option. Now, obviously, there's like career days and shit like that. And they're like, this is the different options that you have. But never in my in my fucking 12 years of schooling before I, I did a semester and was like, fuck this. This isn't for me. Was I ever shown like you do not have to fucking go the college route it just wasn't readily something that was supported like on my own i was like i kind of want to be a tradesman and and just work like a manual labor job for a living um and it just it just it's not supported and i don't understand it because there's such a benefit to it if you are someone who doesn't have the strongest idea as to as to where you should be especially as a man a manual labor job is awesome it's a perfect first oh, step. Phenomenal. It teaches Absolutely. you so many, so many important life skills, mm-hmm. and um, I, I just wish that you know the way things were set up these days that it, that it was more supported. Um, so, so, Will, I know you have something to say about it, so I yeah, don't want to cut I you off there. If I build on both what you, Darren, and you, Pat, said. So I, I absolutely agree that college is not necessarily the way that you know a lot of people should go. It's not it, it you know if you have a hyper specific you know uh, topic essentially that you want to research and you want to go into and you want to develop by all means go for it you know but it, it, it's got to be you know you really have to put your nose to pen and paper and just keep your head down and really work on it you know but for 
for you know the people who don't necessarily have an idea of oh if i go to college what do i want to do you know a trade job is absolutely beneficial you know even if you know down the line you do decide you want to go to college and study something it's absolutely worth it to um uh, you know to to take that trade job and to you know work that 40 plus hour right. week whatever it may be um and you know because like you said Darren it it will you know you will progress as as a person and you know it'll teach you a lot of very important skills you know how to you know how to properly use tools time management you know working with others well you know all these different other things and you know sure you might not have the most luxurious job of you know sitting in an office typing on a computer every single day but you know as a tradesperson, if you really do excel in your field and go above and beyond, you can earn, you know, to sometimes ten times more than what someone with a college degree will. Earn I mean, there's no debt. College. Think about exactly. it. Like right that's, out of high school, if thing. you pick up a trade job, there's no debt. Debt is Zero fucking debt. killing Zero people, debt. killing you know, them. I I could have gone to college and ended up with hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in debt. I decided that college wasn't for me, and so I picked up a trade, and it was hands down the best decision I have ever made. Like I, I get to work with you know I get to work with people that I really enjoy working with. Like I've I've never had a bad experience with a coworker, thankfully, but mm -hmm. you know, and I get to learn something that's genuinely you know progressing, and you know helping. Uh, I, I, I'm being of service to my community essentially. But also, I get to I, I, I have a a massive encyclopedia of of skills that I get to learn along that way, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. so what if I do decide you know later on in life that I do want to go to college, but you know when I'm fresh out of college, 24, 25, whatever, I'm not going to be sitting in you know I'm not going to be riddled with debt sitting in an office job that's making me maybe fifty thousand dollars a year. I could be 24, all in logs, you know, hauling pieces of pipe, you know, and making double that. Or, you know, like... Here's the part that bothers me, and, and, and it's really upsetting. It's like, mm. it does not matter, like, if you mm. do happen to go to college, where your mm. fucking degree comes from. A nurse exactly. from, from, from fucking... A nurse from, what, Northeastern is going to be the same nurse from, like, a, a local community college. It, it really exactly. doesn't matter. And and here's the bottom line. Like, your work experience is everything. Like, mm -hmm. you get two fucking resumes in front of you and you have a community college. I'm just using nurse as an example. Community college nurse who has, like, fucking four hours. years of, like, CNA yeah. work and she has, like – a year of intensive care work and you have like a northeastern student who's only been in classroom clinicals who's mm -hmm. who's only been in controlled environments and there's no true like work to be seen there but oh my god i have the pedigree i mm -hmm. i spent a hundred thousand dollars on this degree like that doesn't matter it's not worth it. that doesn't no, matter no. they don't care no they don't no and you'll see that these people are going to see the most experienced person to do that job people from our generation are going to get a rude awakening once they get out of college and like oh my god i cannot get a job because i have no work experience can't that's the bottom line can't mortgage. get the job i want like you're going to get yeah, a job get somewhere job you, you can't get the job you studied for right you know you, it's like you, oh my god like i do this certain degree. degree and it's like i'm projected this salary yeah but when but when not directly out of when? college exactly. it's not realistic it doesn't happen exactly. exactly like you know any any sort of trade that has to do with specifically fire protection services whether that's electrician you know a pipe fitter or you know working with other of those specialized systems i cannot recommend them anymore like you know with what i'm doing as a sprinkler fitter you know no debt first of all four years of an apprenticeship you know four years of schooling as well right after that again no debt if i negotiate well i could be looking at between like 70 and eighty thousand dollars a year right but also 
I have the potential to work my way up to six figures, which is unbelievable in that short amount of time. Again, with no debt, right? So I could have gone and got a college degree, worked my ass off doing whatever the fuck, you know, be riddled with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt mm -hmm. and starting out, you know, making the median salary of 50 some odd thousand dollars. And then over the next 30 years, you know, say 10 years before I retire, like, oh, yeah, great. I'm making $100,000 a year, but, you know, I've still got, you know, $100,000 of debt. I don't know how I'm going to pay that off, but I will, you know. And then you have a, you know, house with an unbelievable mortgage rate. You've got a car that's still not paid off, and, you know, your family doesn't love it. How like, are we <laughs> supposed to purchase homes how is our generation supposed to purchase homes with average median salaries coming out of college with exactly. debt it's not going to happen now before happen. we we dive down that rabbit hole pat i, I like i, I want to talk to you about this because okay. you and i have this uh similar experience as uh, you and i both only have one semester done of college like i just want to talk I, about realistically i didn't have a full semester either way either way not not the important piece, but how different emotionally wise is it to you to go from A, being a college student and B, being like a manual labor worker? So me personally, I um, am just a lot. I, I, I'm definitely happier with where I'm at right I'll now. I'll let you go first. Yeah. I, I, I feel as though every day I wake up, I have a stronger purpose. You know, there there are more people that rely on me. There's a greater responsibility. And I, I do take pride in that. Um, I don't really feel the pressure as much as I feel pride, but as a college student, I did not feel like much. I did not feel like what I was doing was going to amount to very much because there were so many people doing the same thing as I, but as a tradesman, you are now the minority in the workforce because there are not too many young people out there mm -hmm. going for trades. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to talk to me, Pat, about what that transition was like going from the typical college student to listen, I'm a man and I'm taking up a trade. You know, it so, doesn't happen often. So please tell me. So um, when I was at college, um, I was Patty fucking Jones, baby. The party, you know baby. Life of the good. fucking party. I was having fun. I was doing shit. Um, but I wasn't really doing anything for my future. Mm -hmm. And realistically, I wasn't doing any schoolwork. Mm -hmm. Uh and I, I whatever when I, when I got kicked out of school, I definitely didn't do shit. Um, but I felt zero reliability when I was at school. Um, but now that I'm working, I feel full responsibility for what i have to do like you're a foreman now and, there's true yeah, weight to what you do and that, and the days that you do pick up that makes me feel wait i i need i need somebody to rely on me for me to do something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm. it's just different you know the way you go about yeah. your day is totally different mm -hmm. when you have people that uh especially rely as my boss uh, they're like yeah. Listen, man, we got deadlines, and then we have customers that we need to make happy. It's not like that in college. It's like, yeah. listen, like everything technically is on you, but there is definitely someone to fill your spot if you do not live oh, up yeah. to the fucking expectation. Ten times out of ten, yeah, yeah, it, and it, like it's next man or woman up. That's how like, it is in college. If, like, I don't know, like I, my view on it, like I would rather help somebody else than help myself. Mm -hmm. I can. You know what I mean? Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Me. Both of you agree with me. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Like, there's nothing I, better. I there's nothing better. If I can, if if I can quickly build on that, please do. Yeah. I, the, there's there's nothing better than 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 you know, being that person or you know a part of that company that someone you know desperately needs, and then they contact your company and have you go out and do that work of like, oh. All right. Okay, I'm being of use. Like I'm, you know, I'm I'm actually I'm quite literally making a tangible difference in this world by me doing what, you know, my job. Mhm. Mm which is a great feeling. 
Yeah. I, like I, I, I like. I love it whenever I get to go out on like an emergency service call. I mean, I know it's 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 a bit different from what you guys do, but like, say it's like ten thirty on like a Friday night, and you know someone's system tripped. I get to go out and repair that, and I get to you know I get paid for that. I everything along those lines is is handled, but like, you know, I I get to to completely you know essentially save the day heavy air quotes yeah. of like you know here's a problem i got i was the one to fix it that makes me unbelievably happy but also proud of myself for being able to do that work and um to you know after you know whatever however long it might have taken you know, being able to look back at the work I did and go, holy shit, I did a yeah. great job. I like, mean, in landscaping, was... dude, it's incredible to see the, the oh, turnaround. I fucking love landscaping. Especially the cleanups, detail. dude. You oh know, it's, it's awesome. And and here's the thing about the trades that, that's very different from a, any other profession, I feel, is that mm. it, it, it equips you with these character qualities and, and you pick different ones up as you go but and the people you meet too that too eventually at the end of the day whether it's the people or the work somewhere along the lines you are built into a more honorable and respectable man mm. at the end of the day mm. yeah so absolutely there, there's absolutely. nothing better than that and and if there's anything that uh i can say and i, I don't know if it's particularly to you know connect directly to the trades is that I've done a lot more good deeds these days without mm -hmm. talking about them. That's the mm -hmm. biggest thing. You need to move in silence the same way that you do on social media. Mm -hmm. uh, you shouldn't play yourself up. You shouldn't mm -hmm. only give the highlights and be like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, this is yeah. the 1%, but I'm making it look like 90. It just mm -hmm. shouldn't be the way. I think mm -hmm. the best way to be is 90% of the best things you do shouldn't even be spoken about, shouldn't even be seen. If you do mm -hmm, a good yeah. deed, tell nobody. Mm -hmm. That's just how you should operate through life. And I think the next biggest thing that I can think about is gratitude. Just be mm -hmm. grateful for, for what you have at this moment exactly. and, and exactly. where you might be going. Okay, Because mm -hmm. every day is totally different. Mm -hmm. You know, Some days may feel, may feel somewhat similar, but it's, you know, when you really look back at it, you're like, man, every day has something special about it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. no two, no uh, the, two days no are two alike. Days are the same. No, yeah. not at all. Not a different at all. puzzle that you're handed every single day of trying yeah. to solve. It's like, oh, there no. is something to be happy, sad, mad, or afraid about in in exactly. every single day. And mm -hmm. you know, thank God. Uh, what and, I tell, what I tell a whole bunch of people, if what I tell I, this uh, this guy I was working with the other day, he was, he was. Being down and shit. Mm -hmm. And um, I told him, I was like, hey, I was like, I smile about the last thing I told to my dad before he died. And the last thing I told to my dad was, damn, you're a fucking fall risk like my dementia ridden grandmother. <laughs> and I walked out of that room. <laughs> that was the last thing I said to my dad before he died. So here's and what's great I about that is that you've been able to carry comedy in, in, in the darkest situations mm -hmm. and, and it's awesome. And um, the biggest piece that I that I take away from that is that you cannot be afraid to be yourself in, in any situation. Mm -hmm. What I was going to say before is that I'm sure there's this clip that we've all seen and, and it's Mike Tyson on his podcast and what he talks about is hitting – rock bottom and i feel like mm -hmm. all three of us are are connected in that way that we've all been there we've all mm -hmm. been at the rock lowest bottom. point yes. mentally and 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 the, the yeah. climb up is the most beautiful thing in the world now i most know that the three of us satisfying most gratifying climb of the three of us are life. not done we're nowhere near let done me, but let, let me let me say this done. real quick this, it's fantastic have, to see where we're at i have barely inclined but the slight incline i've made is awesome. It's incredible. And there's you nothing guys like can, it. Can agree with me on that. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. There's nothing like it to hit rock bottom, and then even that first step out uh, of of the darkest trench of that fucking hole is just spectacular. And 
the story that I will tell, and, and it's kind of going to be my, my send-off point, is that when I dropped out of college, I had no idea where I was going. I had no direction. I had nothing. I was an insecure, uh, you know, maybe some people would think that I was outspoken and that I was a sociable person. I didn't feel like that. I had major insecurities. Uh, I, I felt like, uh, like, a, like a shut-in. I didn't really want to interact with anybody. The first thing that I did was take a sales job. I was knocking on doors and I put myself in a very uncomfortable situation. And I think you have to do that. You have to oh, expand absolutely. your horizons and you have to be uncomfortable to grow as a person. So I'm knocking on doors and I'm speaking to people that I, I don't even know who they are. And I'm trying to sell them something. But really, that was that was never the whole point of that experience. I was connecting with people and, and I was growing as a person. I was developing these skills to just interact sociably that I had never had before. So after that, you know, once I broke that barrier and, and I had the ability to speak in front of people that I didn't know and, and like we'd have meetings as a team and I'd have to speak in front of like 30, 40 people and just kind of bullshit. It was like, man, there's nothing that really bothers me other than that. Mm -hmm. So people with social anxiety, they know better than anybody else that that is like their worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. But, um, I, you know, I love bullshitting. It's awesome, but that, that experience for me just kind of set the tone. It was like, dude, if I can take this insecure, you know, immature child and, and throw him into the fire and mold him, you know, I think the best representation, and it's kind of awesome that this is actually something that's already like a, a fairy tale, is like the phoenix, dude. Fucking phoenix rises from oh, the wait, ashes. Oh, wait, are we talking about the phoenix? Are we talking about phoenix? The phoenix so rises that, from the ashes, and our oh, pal oh, in the top oh, right go, has his phoenix let's tattoo. Let's go, cut. There is no let's better me, way cut. to end off the first working man's coffee hour than to leave you with this. It does not matter where you are at this point in your life. If you do feel as if you're at rock bottom, trust me, the the Phoenix had to fucking be ashes in order to rise up and, and become something bright and beautiful. So I got, I got some last words for us, pals. Let's, let's, let's run through it. What do we got? What's, what's the, what's the last word we're going to leave people with today? We've had a lot of fun. We've had some laughs and, and we've, we've gotten pretty serious at the end, but motivation is everything these days. You got to find a way to get through your day. So Will, what are you going to leave us with? So one thing that I've learned that I absolutely love is that you don't have to be great to start. But to be great, you have to start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if you do want to be a great person, you know, great guy, whatever it is, you have to start. You won't, you know, you won't be great at all if you don't start. You know what I love and take, I even think if I you know. Take that one step, you're still leagues above everybody else. I think I know exactly what you're talking about now. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's it's this mm -hmm. quote. It's either one day or day one. Exactly. Exactly like 100%. that. A hundred percent. I agree with that a hundred percent. Pat, what are you going to leave people with as we get to the end of our podcast? In order to be great, you need to be a pussy. <laughs> you have to be a pussy yeah. to be yeah. great. And let me, it sounds bad. Let me explain this right quick. So, you need that one person to tell you you're wrong and you need to stop. Because if you're just going to go and go and somebody tells you you're fucking great, you're awesome, you're just going to stop. Like, I, every time I'm feeling like shit, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to be honest, my first day being a foreman and working, I was pushing 50, 100 pounds of fertilizer around. And I was throwing up and I was feeling like I can't do this shit no more. Mm -hmm. I called up my mom's I ja Jackie Jones, greatest lady in my life. Love her. She's my mom. Big shout called out. Called her up. Big shout out. I called her up. I'm like, mom's, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done with this shit. And she just called me a pussy. That's all she did. She was like, yeah, you're being a pussy. You're fine. Finish what you got to do. Mm -hmm. And then... And then see what you have after lunch. Mm -hmm. 
finished it up, and every time I was feeling like shit, I threw up. Tw I threw up twice before I called her, and then after that, didn't throw up one more time. Every time I I did, I, I won't lie. I gagged multiple times, but after the first gag, I I told myself I go, "You're being a pussy. You don't feel like shit." Um, I won't lie. I have gone to the doctors, and they have told me that I have a serious heart condition. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and you just keep pushing. You just but, keep pushing. You you were defying the odds. I don't give a fuck about my heart condition. No, you do I not. I give a fuck about my landscaping company. Yes, there you so, do. I Ellie, love it. I love it, Pat. And I am going to snowball off of Pat to end us off here. You have to dare to be great. A man exactly. who okay. makes no mistakes has never had anything at all. The best mm -hmm. way to go about life is to burn bridges and fall down and make mistakes and know that someday... Someday I will stand at the highest peak, mm -hmm. and the only way I could have done that is by building. The only oh, way yeah. to build is to first tear down and build again. And, then buy, and buy build peak. again, gentlemen. Let's send it off. Yeah. I got a little outro song that I'm going to play. So let's We're just going to set the mics down. It's been fun. Yeah. Working Man's Coffee Hour. Episode you, 1 boys. has Thank been you, boys. a fucking dream. Thank it's been fun. Thank you for listening if you listen to this point. So, Love you all. gentlemen, Godspeed, soldiers, Godspeed. We will, Godspeed. we will sign off with this last fifteen seconds. Just set your mics down, enjoy yourselves. Mic check.